Daniel Wellington is probably the most popular watch brand on social media. So much so that in 2017, they were named the fastest growing private company in the whole of Europe. And this is mainly off the back of their impressive social media marketing campaigns. It's well known that their watches themselves are low quality pieces that are mass produced in China, which in all truth is like many other watch brands and products in general. It's not necessarily a bad thing. One of the differences, however, is the price point and the markup of the products. Daniel Wellington watches are considered by watch enthusiasts to be some of the most overpriced on the market. But as with many successful companies, their marketing pretty much commands the price that they ask for the watches. For this video, I thought it would be fun to order some Daniel Wellington watches directly from China to see how close I could get to the real thing and how much money I might be able to save. I don't really endorse buying fake or replica products. However, what I've found and what I'm going to be sharing with you in this video is pretty shocking and it might not actually be a fake at all. Here was my plan of action. It's well known that you can get watches that just look like these branded watches. But I also wanted to try and get hold of one that was as close as possible to the original. That was ideally the same inside and out. And as such, I spent a couple of days doing research and I trawled through a variety of Chinese websites for watches that on paper should offer the same as a Daniel Wellington. And in the end, I ended up with two watches from two separate websites. One was from DHgate and this came in at around eight UK pounds. And then it went slightly more upmarket with another one from AliExpress, this time for around £20. And of course, I had to buy a real Daniel Wellington watch from their website to compare against. I got this one on special offer and used a discount code on the top, which made it £135. And it came with this extra gift wrapping on the top. Delivery time in all three was similar. But what made me chuckle is that one of the watches direct from China arrived the day before the Daniel Wellington watch from their official website, despite the fact that I ordered them at the same time. But the question is, what did I receive? First, we'll take a look at the cheaper Chinese watch, and then afterwards, we'll have a look at the slightly more expensive one. On the website, this first one looked quite promising. When I looked at the specifications, I noticed that several of them were the same as the Daniel Wellington. However, this listing did have a few warnings signs. The first is that there was no named movement. You'll also notice that some of the images here are really low resolution, which suggests that these pictures have been taken from elsewhere and reused. And of course, you got the price as well. With this being the cheaper one out of the two Chinese watches, I definitely didn't expect as much from this watch. So all in all, I wasn't surprised when this watch turned up in an envelope. Let's have a look at what was inside. When side by side with a regular Daniel Wellington watch, with this one, to be honest, you can tell that it's a knockoff. There are a few giveaway signs. The first one is the font on the front of the dial. The font is larger, it's not quite in the same position, and it's much more bold. Also, you'll notice there's a difference in terms of the size of the case. The diameter of the eight pound watch is a lot smaller, and the case is also thicker as well. The rear as a whole is a different shape too. The second and hour markers around the perimeter were the next thing I noticed. Because if you look closely, you'll see that these don't follow the perimeter of the dial. There's a little gap all the way around the outside. Whereas with the real Daniel Wellington, these are all exactly up against the edge. The strap as well, whilst not necessarily being a worse quality strap, is just structurally a little bit different. This one has a slight bulge around the top half and then around the holes themselves, it flattens out a lot. Whereas the original Daniel Wellington is a lot thicker all the way across. And whilst there are those few differences, I imagine when worn by itself to an untrained eye, they would probably think that this was a Daniel Wellington. In terms of weight as well, it is very similar and the materials do seem to align quite closely. That being said, this watch isn't the reason that I've been excited to make this video for the past few weeks, because it's time to take a look at the 20 pound one. This listing did match up better on the website. The specifications matched exactly with the regular Daniel Wellington. The images looked far better and were much more close up. And at this slightly increased price, I thought we might get a bit closer to a regular Daniel Wellington. Now, there are two things I have to mention. The first one is that I had to get the gold version because the silver version was out of stock. And the second one is that the seller has taken down the listing where I bought this one from. I don't know why this has happened. It's very annoying because I wanted to link this in the description so that you can go and check this listing out yourself. What arrived in the mail then? This is where the intrigue starts. 
This watch luckily didn't arrive in an envelope. Inside the package, there was a box. A box that looked suspiciously familiar. Outside of the extra gift layer that the regular Daniel Wellington came with as part of that special offer, the regular box was exactly the same. As far as I can tell, within reasonable limits, these are identical. Side by side, they match up so perfectly that I could even exchange the lids between them. The material used on the outside and inside felt exactly the same on both. I was unable to truly differentiate between the two. Inside the box was even more of a surprise. The insides of the box were essentially the same, apart from the cheaper one actually came with a bonus NATO strap chucked in for free. Inside both were the regular sort of Daniel Wellington tags. And now we get to the watches themselves. And side by side, outside of the case color, these two are basically indistinguishable from one another. If you handed me both of these watches inside a regular jewelry store, I would think that they were both Daniel Wellingtons. There are a couple of fractional differences that I do want to point out. The first thing is the tone of the white dial. In regular lighting conditions, you actually can't see a difference at all between these. But when you've got them under perfect white light, like I've got in this studio, you can just about tell that there's a fractional difference between the two. I actually don't know if this is just because this is a slightly different color variant and they've used a fractionally different tone of dial to go with the watch, but it is something to bear in mind. And also when you zoom in really close, like to a microscopic level, you can just about tell that the second markers on the cheaper watch are fractionally thicker. However, they're so similar, this could literally be a matter of variance between different batches, a quality control issue essentially. Outside of those factors, these watches are exactly the same in every single way. The case itself is exactly the same size, the same shape and the same weight. The rear of the watch is lasered exactly the same and each have their own unique serial number. The polishing of the case itself is equally as good across both of the watches. The dial itself is so close, it's difficult to separate them even when you put them next to one another. The positioning and size of the text is identical. Even the straps, these are the same quality as one another. And in terms of the way they feel, they feel exactly the same. You will notice that the cheaper watch has rectangular shaped holes rather than the circular ones used in the regular Daniel Wellington. However, I'm not counting that as a difference because I've seen plenty of videos about regular Daniel Wellingtons where they've arrived with the rectangular holes like from this watch. It might be a recent change, maybe they switched to the circular ones instead. And this is just using old stock. But truly, it shocked me how similar these are when you consider the price difference. You can have this watch for £20 or you can have this one at a recommended retail price of almost £200. But there's one final thing I wanted to check out to really see if these watches were the same or not. Because as far as I can tell, the glass is the same, the case is the same, the strap's the same, but what's inside. So I took both of these watches to a local authorized watch dealer in Staffordshire. Now they wanted to remain anonymous and wouldn't let me film in the store, but they have decades of experience when it comes to watches themselves. And I wanted an expert to check the movements inside the watch to make sure that I wasn't making a mistake or that there was any sort of fake movements inside. But they confirmed my exact suspicions that each of these watches contains exactly the same Japanese movement. So these watches, as far as I can tell, are the same watch, aesthetically and internally. If these aren't from the same factory, they're from the one next door. And what gets me is that the retailers of these cheap watches, they're still making a profit on this at 20 pounds. Whereas this watch, even at its very cheapest, you're talking minimum five times that cost. I think this really shows three things. Number one is that buying direct from China can work, but it doesn't give consistent results. There are many products that you're gonna find, like that first one I showed in this video, that don't match up, and that don't quite look like the pictures. But there are others like the 20 pound watch that are basically exactly the same. Number two is it pays to do your research. Now, although you can go onto these websites and you can easily find a watch that does look like one of these other watches for about five pounds, if you're looking for a product that's as close as possible, you have to know what you're looking for. And admittedly, you do have to spend time researching to find a decent seller that is actually selling a product that's gonna be of the expected quality. It's not as quick as you think. But also number three, it shows the power of marketing. 
So many companies that make much better watches than Daniel Wellington suck at marketing. They really haven't embraced social media at all. Companies like Timex and Seiko and many others, they really haven't adapted very well to the internet. Whereas other startups like Daniel Wellington have smashed out of the park. They're masters of social media, they utilize influencers everywhere, and credit to them for that. They do a damn good job of that. And that's why they can charge so much for these and people still buy them, despite the fact that you can get many watches for far less money that are essentially the same thing. If you want to look at some better quality and more affordable alternatives to the likes of Daniel Wellington or Movement Watches, I did a great video about that a while ago, so make sure you go and check that one out next. And share this video with someone that might find it interesting or useful. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.